This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Amazon's latest Kindle, which they still call the Kindle, unfortunately. Hard to discern between the three generations, but this is what we'll call the Kindle 3, and most other reviewers call it the Kindle 3, because this is the third generation of Kindle ebook reading devices with a 6-inch screen. This is a mainstream format 6 inches. The first thing you'll notice, I'll put my hands around it here, is that it's a lot smaller than previous generation Kindles. It's finally starting to look like a personal electronics device and not like a mini computer. It's also extremely thin. It's a third of an inch thin. Take a look at the back here. It's a sealed back design. And we've got large grill areas for the stereo speakers. It's pretty good for listening to Audible and things like that. You probably really want to use headphones, and speaking of which, as always, three and a half millimeter headphone jack is here, your volume controls, micro USB port, and the power slider. The page turn buttons have changed from the previous generation Kindle, which we don't have to show you here, but we do have the big brother, the Kindle DX Graphite, which uses the same button scheme as the last generation Kindle. Large buttons right here on the right hand side only. The nice thing is now they're on both sides, but the difficult thing is you can see they're quite a bit smaller and they're also side triggered, so sometimes when I pick it up and carry it around it changes the page on me. A little bit annoying there. The joystick that we know from all Kindles here has been replaced by a four-way D-pad, something like a cell phone D-pad. At first I didn't like the joystick, but once I got used to it I find I actually do prefer it a bit to the D-pad, but that's not much of a deal breaker. What can be annoying is you've got to be careful if you're hitting the corners here, you might accidentally hit these buttons, which are pretty close, because the menu, back, and home buttons that used to be on the side spine have been moved to the keypad area, so Amazon could make this 21% smaller than the previous generation Kindle. Again, as you can see, the elongated buttons that we knew from past Kindles have been changed to round buttons, and these are domed buttons and they have a rough texture. I really like these. I find this much easier to use than this kind of keyboard where my fingers were just kind of sliding off the top or the bottom of the keys. You really stay centered here. This is quite pleasant. Here we're going to do a size comparison with three popular readers. Here's the Kindle 3, obviously. This is the Kobo reader that's offered by Borders and sold directly by KoboBooks.com as well. And here's the Barnes & Noble Nook. Now they're all six inch readers and it used to be the Nook was one of the smallest around, then Kobo came out and they were pretty teeny, and now Amazon's outdone them with a device that's just about the same in terms of height and width and is significantly thinner. We'll take a look at the side view of these. If you can see on the video, the Nook is by far the thickest and the heaviest. For some reason the Nook is just a heavy ebook reader, while the new Kindle is 8.7 ounces for the one with Wi-Fi and 3G making it incredibly light, and lighter as light as a paperback book, as Amazon likes to point out. In fact, ours actually weighed in at only 8.4 ounces, and this is the Wi-Fi Plus 3G model. It's available in two versions. You can get the Wi-Fi only one for $139, and then there's the Wi-Fi Plus AT&T 3G, which has international roaming capabilities, for $189. So if you if you just want to download your books when you're at home or you know you're always near a Wi-Fi access point, you can just get the $139 model. Otherwise, the features are identical on them, so you're not going to lose out on anything else. The big issue, and this is going to be hard to see on video, is the increased contrast. Like the Kindle DX Graphite, this uses the new Pearl e-ink display that has significantly higher contrast. Particularly blacks are blacker. The background's not that much whiter. It's a bit whiter. But the blacks are really black. The Nook is using the Amasis font right here, which is a semi-slab, which means sort of semi-bold font, and it's still not as contrasty as the Kindle is. It's a lot easier to read in low light, particularly the Kindle. And the Kobo here is the lightest, looking fairly faint. Because it is hard to see the differences in screen contrast, we, we do have some high-resolution pictures, including some close-up macro shots of the differences between this, and also between this and the iPad, which is very revealing, because you can see the color LCD grid if you get really close with the macro lens. So be sure to visit our site to look at the full review and see the pictures there. We're going to show you now is other improvements. Page turns have gotten very quick. You're always going to have that flash to black for a second with e-ink. That's part of the technology. It's an inherent feature, but that is like really, really, really quick. It's hard to do these things simultaneously, but let's just try doing page turns at the same time and see who wins. Kindle 
Kindle, obviously faster than look at page turns. And that's just reading an Amazon book. This one also handles PDFs and Mobi format books, for those of you who have the older Mobi format. And we're going to take a look at PDFs in a minute, but first I'm going to show you some of the features. For text management, as you can see here, you can choose from eight different font sizes. You can change the typeface between regular, condensed, and sans serif. You can change your line spacing, words per line. Turn on text-to-speech if you want to hear a robotic voice, which we'll do for you in a minute and you can switch the screen orientation. Unlike the Graphite Kindle DX, this doesn't have an accelerometer in it, so you're manually going to choose which orientation you want, but you can have it any of four ways, including using upside down if that floats your boat. Let's turn on text-to-speech for a minute so you can hear that. You have your choice of male and female voices. They're really the same voice, just set up or down a pitch, depending on which gender it's supposed to be. This route through every back road and utilizing every hillock and piece of shelter we could find. The sky above us was streaked with scudding clouds and getting darker by the minute. The mobile phone rang again. We were booked into a hotel at Wimmerooks, just outside Pallone. And they'll take the dog and cats, yes. No problem. The fools. Okay, that's clearly not going to replace your Audible book collection anytime soon, but uh, it does have its uses. Again, text-to-speech is not always available in every book. It's up to the publisher as to whether or not they want to allow it. It seems to me like most of them are allowing it, though. Here we have the front screen, which now supports collections, that we haven't created any here yet, and not much has changed. You can sort in a variety of different ways. But we're going to take a look at PDF right now. PDF handling is greatly improved and now rivals the Kindle DX. Graphite, in fact, it has a couple of features that we'd like to see on the Graphite. We probably will, the most important being adjustable contrast. That's the first time I've ever seen on a US e-ink e-reader display where you can change your contrast. So here we've got a PDF manual. Page turns here are also very quick. Text is teeny but readable, given the 6-inch display. It's not really ideal for PDF. They're usually meant for a much larger print size format. And here's something with a picture. And now we're going to zoom in. And we're not going to destroy the layout in the process, which is pretty cool. So let's move it up to 200%. Oh, and you can see here there's also an option for contrast. We're at default right now, which is perfectly adequate. You can also make notes and highlights in PDFs now and access the dictionary, which is pretty cool. So you get a zooming rectangle to select the section that you would like to zoom in on, and we're going to choose that, and there it is. The layout is still intact. Slightly more useful maybe in landscape orientation, depending on your document, but works just fine, especially if you want to zoom in on an illustration and also quite quick. Now the zoom is only per page. It's not going to flip over to the next page if you get keep hitting the D-pad. The last thing we're going to take a look at is the web browser, which again is greatly improved even over the Kindle DX Graphite. Still put under the experimental section. And we're going to do this over 3G, not over Wi-Fi, so you can see what that's like. It is faster over 3G, over Wi-Fi, but it's not too bad over 3G either. Here we are on the Facebook page. You can zoom, and you can also switch to landscape view. We're going to stick with this for the moment, this view. And we are going to take a look at bookmarks. Amazon starts you out with a good selection of book, bookmarks. And by default, it's going to desktop mode view, which is pretty nice. There's an article view mode, which makes it easier to read text. It's probably more practical on this e-ink display. But in general, this WebKit browser is pretty darned amazing. And we'll go to our own website, which is a non-mobile site with plenty of images and things. That's not bad. In terms of load speed and in terms of rendering, I mean, that's what our site should look like. And it's still working on loading the ad on the right-hand side of the page. And there it is. And obviously there's a zoom-in function here. 
and it even supports things like the DHTML drop-down menus, which is pretty advanced. We've seen smartphones that still have problems with that kind of thing. And you've got the virtual cursor here with the finger. I'm going to go to this review page here. And again, you can switch this to landscape mode if you want. This page has a lot of images on it and a video, which we won't be able to see because this browser does not have flash. But again, the rendering is amazing, even deal tables on the side here and Amazon advertisements. There's the photograph. And it's still working on loading the page. While it's working on loading the page, you don't get to control very much. We'll do a zoom in now so we can see how that works. So we're on the nice photograph. And there's the zoomed in view. And we'll switch to article mode now. So that makes it much more readable in terms of what you can read on an e-ink display. And it keeps the pictures too. Just formats it to flow very nicely in a single column and it makes the font size large enough that you can actually view it. I wouldn't say that you're going to exactly give away your smartphone at this point, but for, for a, an e-ink browser it's pretty darn good. So that's the Amazon Kindle 3, otherwise known as just Amazon Kindle on Amazon's website. It is available now. It just started shipping and they are back ordering them at the moment because they seem to be selling so well. Visit Mobile Tech Review to read our full review.